I pray, Lord God, that no one would walk out of this place in an unsaved state, but instead they would open their hearts to you, this being the first day of the rest of their lives in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for the youngsters as they go into their various classes and understanding, Lord, that seeds have been planted in their hearts as well. And this may be the day that a young person comes to know you as Lord and Savior. Please, I pray, let the instructor lead them, Lord God, and have the discernment to understand the child is ready to receive Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for your word that is sufficient to accomplish the purpose wherewith it is designated. My prayer is that, that if there's anybody who's not saved, they would, they would come to you today. So, Lord God, aware of my own weakness, I ask you to stand in my body and speak through my mouth that your word goes forth and finds good ground that we may grow thereby. This is my prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're making your way to your seats, uh, please know that we have Bibles available for you. High school age and under, you're released to your classes. If you do not have a Bible by your raised hand, please let us know. And as you're preparing, make sure that you manage your communication device so that it does not become a point of distraction, meaning that you put it in the off or silent position. By your raised hand, you'll let us know. Right over this way as well, okay? And, it, and uh, make sure that you have a Bible. Now, for our, thank you for our special guests. You have a Bible in your, in the bag that we gave you, so you, you're you're equipped fully. And we're going to kick off our love month, uh, with a love m love month sermon today, uh, entitled Five Ways to Express Your Love of God." And everyone who is able to stand without great difficulty, would you please do so? And let's read uh, from the scripture text that I provided from Deuteronomy chapter four, verse uh, De Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four through six, with a loud voice of authority. Everyone who is able to read, please do so. Let's go. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated. I mentioned to you that um, we're starting off this first sermon on the topic of love because this is love month. Say that, love month. It's in the air, you know, and we've decided to embrace that with a month-long celebration. Uh, those of you who signed up for the uh, couples event at the Tesoro uh, club will you know, likely have a great time there, and I I, I tell you, you need to b make sure you bring a a dance partner with you because Sister Harper's dance card is fully taken <laughs> in the evening, as mine as my as well as mine is. Okay, so make sure you bring your own partner. Um, I think that that God ought to get a little extra love this month. Amen. And. Um, Especially considering all the things that he has done for us, and but I but I understand that, um, you know, expressing love, especially when it comes to God, it, you know, can be somewhat difficult. We love God, but you know, we want to be conversant. We want to be able to understand how to really, um, you know, be incredible in how we express our love for God. So this morning, the sermon is designed to elevate your understanding a bit. So I'm borrowing uh, from a book that many of you know that I'm, I, I, one of my favorite books called the, the Five Love Languages written by Dr. Gary Chapman. And those of you who don't know uh, what the five love languages are, I've got a little graphic for you and you can, you can harvest these if you like, but I'll, I'll be uh, going through these. These are the, uh, the five love languages now. According to Dr. Chapman, every person has a love language that embodies or expresses the manner in which they like to receive love or appreciation. Each of us has a love language that expresses love to us and makes us feel love. Say, feel love. So here they are, the five love languages. Act of service, tangible gifts, quality time, 
words of affirmation and then touch. And then in the, in, in the case of people specifically, physical touch. Each person is wired in such a way that in order for them to feel love, they must receive at least one of these forms of expression of love from the person they want to feel loved by. So, for example, if, if a person's love language is tangible gifts, that person gets really happy when someone buys them something and gives them something. It doesn't have to be an expensive gift. Just the idea that Brother Mitchell was at the airport, for example, and you know he's coming back from a business trip, and as he sees a little item in the store, and if he knows that Sister Mitchell's love language is gifts, it just could be a little tchotchke or whatever, and he picks that up for her, and it and he brings it home. And when she gets that gift, it makes her feel all all gooey and everything because the, the her beloved brought her a gift. Okay. Uh, in acts of service, a person who feels loved and appreciated by acts of service will be really happy when their spouse or their beloved does something for them, such as you know making them a nice meal or or making a web page or something. Or the person feels loved when someone does something for them. In quality time, it's about being together. Uh, this particular person feels loved because the spouse or the beloved spends time with them. They don't care about whether you are doing things or whether you get them gifts. They could care less about that. What they want from you, because their love language is time, they want to spend time with you. Okay, and then we also uh, have words of affirmation, and again, this is a very powerful one, uh, because such a person has uh, feels loved when it is expressed verbally. Okay, they what they love to hear you say, "Honey, I love you." I'm gonna put you to I just love you. <laughs> Special things said by the spouse makes them feel. Loved and appreciated. It's verbal affirmation. You look nice, you know, so you can't be the kind of, if you have a wife that loves words of affirmation, you can't be the kind of guy that doesn't say anything if she looks nice. Okay? You can't be the kind of guy that only says something if you don't like it. You got to say, uh oh, 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 you look good. You don't have to do that right, Nada. This is love month, but we want to keep it under control, okay? <laughs> and then there's the love language of physical touch. This is not to be confused with sexual touching. Here's what we're talking about. Uh, some people are wired in such a way. There we go. This is safe. Some people are wired in such a way that, it, they, you know, you just they just like it if you hold their hand. You just a little, little rub, you know, sitting together on the couch. They they don't care about you buying them nothing, but just it's this 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 physical touch, you know she loves it or he loves it if you just rub that hand and stuff like that. Okay, so we all have these. Lauren, watch out now. <laughs> we all have these various needs. So what does all this have to do with God? Well, I'm glad you asked. A moment ago in our opening, I said. You know, we read that we have a commandment to love God with all of our hearts, meaning to engage everything that we have in us to express love to God. And, 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 and there isn't a formula given, one formula. I mean, we're told, you know, if you love the Lord, keep your commandments. But I think that God actually can flow in all of these languages, that he can appreciate an expression of love. And so what we want to do is we want to take this human model in order to elevate our ability to communicate love to God because his, our relationship with him is important and we want to make sure that we're very good at showing love. If you understand that, say amen. All right, now some of you all already, like I got to go home and tell her this is my love language. And by the way, you should. It's nothing more frustrating than trying to guess the love language of your spouse. Many females, I think, believe that the man, sh you ought to know if you love me. No, the easiest thing to just tell him. <laughs> just tell him. And he'll thank you forever. Amen. All right, five ways to express our, our love to God. Number one, acts of service. And you'll see that I'm directing you to the 100th Psalm. And it says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us 
and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I'm also, for this first point, also act, uh, act, I'm also accessing Acts 20, 18 through 19. It says, And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know that, uh, you know from the first day I, that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. God loves it. When we do things for him. The psalmist exhorted us to serve the Lord with gladness. Be happy, be excited, be enthused about doing things for the Lord. Paul served the Lord by engaging his entire life in acts which ministered to, which helped the things that were important to God. Dictionary.com defines service as the act of being helpful or supplying something that speaks to an area of need. God loves it when we do things that express our love for him. So, for example, you may, may love it when your spouse makes lunch for you. And I used to tell this story all the time. The guys at work used to laugh when they saw me coming in with my little brown bag. Now, I retired. They're still working, by the way. <laughs> Just want to let you know, I retired from that job. And... And they would, they would goof on the fact that I was really, it's, I was really proud of the fact that my wife would get up, you know, at, 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 at 5 o'clock or whatever and make my lunch. To me, that was saying, I love you. If acts of service are your love language, when your husband or wife does, a, does something special for you, you feel love. And in that same way, you can show God you love him by serving him, by serving him. Now, I, now I understand I'm, I'm going off into an area that may be foreign for some folk because a lot of us have our relationship with God is all about what we can get. God is a sugar daddy. So it's what we can get from God. God loves me so I can get something from him. God can you do this for me? God, can you take care of me? God, can you answer my prayers? And, 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 and the problem with this is that it creates this kind of one-sided relationship in which you don't get to access certain features and benefits that you would get if you served God just a little bit. Just as refusing to express love to your spouse by doing things for them. Watch this. If, if it's their love language, but you think it's beneath you, to serve won't necessarily send you to divorce court but it'll make your marriage a whole lot less happy than it could be acts of service are a great way to show God that you love him express your love of God not just by showing up and saying God what can you do for me but ask not what God can do for you, but what you can do for God. Acts of service are a great way to show you love God. Second way is tangible gifts. Notice if you would please in Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 through 4, it says, And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, Watch this. It said the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. It says, every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And then we see from John 3.16, the 8th portion said, For God so what? Loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now this month, of course, Kevin's Jewelers is running all kind of commercials. They, they know Zales, Kevin's Jewelers, and all that. These guys are out there because they know some folk got to buy some, some gifts to get out of the doghouse. Sometimes uh, these gifts are given you know, because you love, but sometimes you, you're trying to stay out of trouble. If you are a person whose love language is gifts, you get all gooey. You get all, wow, when 
they give you something. That's what floats your boat. Abel brought a, a gift to God to express his love. Watch this. God didn't even need it. God did not need it. He already owned everything, but the gift pleased God because of Abel's heart. God accepted that gift as an offering of worship and appreciation because it flowed out of a heart of love for God that motivated Abel to say, God, I want to show how much I love you, so I'm going to give you something that I could have kept for myself. I'm going to give you the first. I'm going to give you the best. I believe that, that giving God gifts is a powerful expression that God really appreciates. Now, again, it, it doesn't make sense logically because God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, by the way. He owns the gold and the gold in them, their hills. He owns everything. Yet I find through the scripture that God appreciates it. And he's pleased when we take something that we could have kept for ourselves and we give it to him. And, and, I, and I think the reason why God loves giving so much is because he himself is a giver. God communicated how much he loved us. Through something that, that, that completely opens man's eyes to the depths of God's love. He said, I want you to know how much I love you, so I'm going to give something to you. I'm going to give Jesus, and you will be able to understand that when we give, we're doing what Jesus, what, what God did through Jesus. God took his son, and he gave his life as a payment for us, because ultimately God's love could not be really expressed by word. He had to do something. He had to give something that was so precious that our eyes could be open and we could see. Some of you today may not know the power of this. You and I were born into this world blind. And you know, Sister Stephanie, they could talk to me all day when I was growing up in the church. But until I began to understand what God did through Jesus, I understood what John 3.16 actually meant. My eyes began to become open to the love of God. God wanted us to know his love, so he sent Jesus uh, as an expression of that love. And, and in seeing the suffering of Christ on the cross and how he died for us, uh, that you and I are able to grasp just how loving God is. Uh, he did that for us, and he demonstrated his love uh, through the act of tangible giving. Uh, and today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord, and he begins to speak to your heart, and he moves on your heart, and you begin to come into contact with his love, I want to tell you, that's, that's the beginning of a powerful thing, because that's the seeds of you having faith in Christ. And by faith, you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord in your life. Tangible gifts. Third way to express our love to God is quality time. Quality time. Again, notice on the screen it says, now again, if you don't know the context, Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. And this is what people are, are, are absolutely like, by the way. God hooked them up. Gave him everything he needed. He didn't have to work a day in his life. All the food was there. Thousands of trees. Name the animals. Get up when you want. No alarm clock. All the weather was good. You didn't have to pay anybody. You know, just sleep out there in the garden and call it a day. And he said, one tree. Just one. Stay away from that tree. Adam was like, God forgive me, son of that. And, and when? They sinned. Something happened. And, and, and we read from Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 9. It says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking uh, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said, Adam, where are you? God loves quality time with his creation. I'm, I'm, I'm particularly drawn to the question that, that God posed. And, and, and I believe the way that, it, that he said is he said, Adam, where are you? Now, now, I know that he knew physically where Adam was. He had created everything, but, but God is calling out to Adam, and what he's calling out is a, is a desperate cry because a relationship had been broken. Before man sinned, Adam and, and, and God used to hang out together. They spent quality time in the garden. Now, because he had sinned, 
that time had been torn apart. Uh, and God says, where are you? I, I wanted to come out and hang with you. I enjoyed being here with you every day. The day that Adam sinned against God was a day that marked the beginning of man's descent into eternal death. This is the reason why God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross huh? because he missed the time that we had. Huh? Don't you know that's what he created us for? He created us for relationship with him. Huh? He enjoyed that communion. Huh? It, 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 it struck at his heart. Huh? He realized that he had lost something incredibly important huh? because now sin had come between man and God. Huh? That's when he was saying, Adam, where are you? Huh? Now there's a wall between us. Huh? Now I can't talk to you. I can't hang out with you. Huh? I can't look at you. You can't be in my presence huh? because you're filthy. Huh? But he wanted us back so much. Uh, he wanted that quality time back so much uh, that he said, I'm going to send my son, Jesus, uh, to go to the cross and die. Uh, I'm going to send my son uh, to be the bridge maker, uh, to be the one that brings back that relationship. Uh, not only could you have quality time with me on, on earth again, uh, like we have with God, but then in eternity, he wanted us so much. He wanted that quality time. Child of God, I want you to hear the plea of God Almighty. Huh? I want you to know that God wants more than your sorry seconds. <laughs> God wants your attention. Huh? God wants your focus. Huh? And that means not just Sunday morning, but he wants a whole lot more. Huh? He wants your heart, mind, and attitude. Huh? He wants to be more than just an afterthought. Huh? God wants you to take the headphones off, turn the computer off. Huh? God wants you to put everything aside. Huh? He said, put some time for me huh? on your calendar. Huh? Because when something is important, huh? you will calendar it. Huh? Don't sit around waiting for time to come and hoping you might get to me. Huh? But make me a priority. Huh? God said, I want to have some time when you ain't thinking about nobody but me. Huh? And so maybe that means you got to tell your girl, hey, hey, hey girlfriend, I'll call you back because huh? I'm taking some time with my, with my father. Huh? God said, I want you to put me on your schedule. I want you to make me a priority. Whether it's just a half hour or 40 minutes or whatever it is, God says, I want quality time with you. Time when the phone's not ringing. Time when you don't have your headsets in your ears. So whatever it is that you have allowed to supplant God's desire to have quality time with you, get rid of it. Put it in its place. I'm not saying you've got to turn into a cloistered monk, stay up in all the time I'm praying. and, and all. That's not what I'm talking about. See, that's the flesh. The flesh will take the point and take it to the ridiculous so you can dismiss it. Huh? Let me shut that foolishness now, right now. Huh? If you can give God 20 minutes of your time Every day that you give him, then, then he'll take the 20 minutes and watch this. He'll expand it because you want it. Quality time. God says, I want that from you. Five ways. Well, you say, well, I don't have time. I understand. That's because you have too many other things on your time sheet. Everybody knows we all got 24 hours in a day. It's just what you have as a priority that you said is more important than time with God. No guilt. I'm just giving you the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Fourth way to express love to God. Words of affirmation. Notice, if you would, please, from the ninth psalm. It says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O, the, o thou most high. Then uh, we look also at the 113th Psalm. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the psalm we read and are reminded and directed to praise the Lord. Now, when we think of praise, we often think reasonably that, you know, well, you know, praise and, and words of affirmation, I mean, why does God need that? Yeah. Look, he already knows how, how awesome he is. You know, he needs you to need you to buff him up if you got an ego problem, if you got low self esteem. 
But it should be no surprise that God loves this because we who are made in his own image need words of affirmation. My sister, you could be making the dynamite food and, 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 and darning his socks and, and, and making sure that the house is, is, is hooked up, but he's dying because he needs words of affirmation. Words of affirmation are very, very important. They're vital. Your spouse loves words of affirmation. Even though you're not a, a talking man, you're not a man of words, you better learn to use some words quick. That's what turns her on, Jack. It ain't your text, it's your words. You're doing all kinds of things, all kinds of acts of service. But if she needs words of affirmation, you're trying to figure out why is it, why is she wearing lips poked out all the time? I do this and I do that. I get her this and I get her that. Well, that's your love language. See, a lot of times we think the other person's love language is the same as ours. Different. Y'all, I know y'all taking notes on this, ain't you? Can't figure out why is she saying, you don't love me. I mean, you're busting your chops, doing all kind of stuff. Because she needs words. Or he needs words. By the way, sisters, it ain't just the sisters. The bros need words, too. And if his language is words, you better use them because some other thing will. <laughs> I got your attention when I said that, didn't I? <laughs> God loves it. And he says, Lord, you're good. He, he loves it. He loves when the people sing praises and declare his wonderful works. God loves it when you express words from your heart about what is on the inside. Because you know what? There's, a, there's some beautiful singing birds. There's some all kind of beautiful things out there. But you know what? God gave us a song that the angels cannot sing. He loves it. When we affirm his greatness. So start learning to be conversant in words that affirm and laud our God. Start developing a heart for exalting his name. So when you say, I'm not really good with words, just open up the Psalms and start quoting them back to God. You will never run out of stuff. It's in there all day. David was a David was a man of words. God said, He's a man after my own heart. Fifth. Finally, five ways to express our love to God. Fifth way, touch. In the opening portion of the sermon, I was going through the definitions. I talked about the kind of person who really thrives upon the physical touch. Now, God is a spirit. He has no physicality in the earthly sense. But don't ever believe that God doesn't like to be touched. The first three weeks of this year of January were awesome in praise and worship. Do you know that there was a palatable feeling of the Spirit of God touching people? Watch this. And being touched. God loves to touch His people. And the way that we create the environment for that is by those words of af- oh come on you got it now words of affirmation. He responds just like if you wa- if you I'm not gonna go there. He responds by if you use the right words, you use the right praise. You you come to him from your heart. He doesn't stand back and say, well you know what maybe I'll get to you. He immediately. He's right there. And when he comes, man, he touches, he hugs, he cuddles, he rocks. Come on. See, that's what it is. That's what it's all. It's not just emotion. It's just you can feel the spirit of God resting. And that's when you say, rock me in your arms. 
And you know what? It's not just a song. You can feel. You can feel God touching. God loves it when we, when we reach out to touch him. God loves that when we try to connect with him. And if we really love God, then we ought to try to be as conversant in all of these languages that we can. Not because it's going to get you to heaven. You already got God's love. But because you're investing in the quality of your relationship with him. The preacher said earlier, God is real. There used to be a song that said, oh, yes, God is real. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my spirit. Show God that you love him. Express your love to God. Serve him. Spend time with him. Work on those words of affirmation. If you're not good with words, open up the scripture. Spend quality time with God. God said, I don't want to always rush him. Just take some time with me. I think that many times God is crying out, where are you? I wanted to meet with you. I wanted to commune with you. And all I saw was the back of your shirt as you were running to do something more important. Spend time with me. Quality time. And then desire to touch him. There's a song, He Touched Me. You know that one? Can you sing it? He touched me, he touched me, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and I about today. I'm asking everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes because I want to give you a, a moment of privacy today. All faces look familiar to me, but I never want to make the mistake of assuming that every person in here knows Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. You know this God that I'm talking about is an awesome God. And, and, to, and to live life without a connection to the Creator, you, you're missing something, my friend. Every person here today needs to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about whether you attended somebody's church. I'm not talking about whether you grew up in the church or not. I'm talking about whether you have been touched by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Not emotionally, but here's how it happened. One day, one day, something happened. I saw the love of Christ. I realized that Jesus had died on the cross. He gave his life for me. And he opened my heart. And on that day, I asked him into my life as Lord and Savior. And I became his because I invited him into my life. Now, my friend, if you have not done that, if you've not invited Jesus Christ into your heart and you have the joy of knowing that he lives in your life as Savior, today I'm inviting you to open your eyes and make eye contact with me today because you can be a born-again child of God. Yes, you can. You can be a born-again child of God. That's the only reason your eyes should be open. Number one, to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about joining this church. I'm talking about connecting with the Creator. So that you can know tonight if you died, and every person here is a candidate for death, that you would be in the arms of the Father because you've accepted Jesus Christ. That's the first invitation on the table. Here's the second. And I've asked everybody to bow their head and close their eyes so that you're not worried about what anybody thinks. Sometimes in our weakness and our frailties, having given our hearts to Christ, we turn away from Him. It's a terrible thing, but it happens. And you know, my sister, if that's you, you know that you've turned your, your back on Christ. You don't, you, don't, you don't love him the way you used to. You don't walk with him. You don't spend time. He's been asking, where are you? And his heart is broken because he wants to reconnect with you today. 
Man, woman, boy, or girl, if that's you today and you know that you've walked away from the Christ that loves you, you want to recommit yourself to him, just simply open your eyes and make eye contact with me. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. God himself desires to reconnect with you, man, woman, boy, or girl. He took me and Wait just a minute, just a little, a little while longer. Just want to make sure. We want to make sure. If you have a need, you need to let somebody minister to you today. Let somebody minister to you today. Let someone minister to you today. Somebody wants to pray with you. Whatever the situation is, God is aware of it. He can help you today. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Eyes open, heads up. Something. Happen and now I know He took me and made me whole. I'm aware that in the room there are some who are hurting today. You need a, you need you need some special time with with our evangelism council. Just stand on your feet right now and go back and let them pray with you. Whoever you are. Doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you're just struggling. You can see where they are. Just take them in wherever. This, take this lady and minister to her. All right? It, whatever you're struggling with. I know that somebody's going to help you today. You don't have to, you don't have to be struggling.